The Tomolib module is the first module to be released in Python, or the first new module I should say, to be released in Python since version 3.9. So I thought I'd do a nice little video about it, uh, you know, talking about, you know, really briefly. It's a really simple little module, so we're not going to be here for very long. But I thought I'd cover it in more detail. If you haven't seen my Python 3.11 guide video that I did on Monday, I'd recommend going and looking at that. Um, we're going to be covering uh you know the things mentioned in that video in more detail over the next few so next monday's or next friday yeah next monday we will be talking about exception groups and then next friday we'll be talking about async task groups if there's any other features that people particularly want me to talk about do let me know and i will talk about them uh, i'm probably not going to go over the self type because that seems self-explanatory but again if you want to see that do let me know but today I thought I'd do, you know, the new module first because obviously new is exciting and this is really useful for people that need to be able to load uh, configuration files, especially for libraries or something that need to be able to load like a custom configuration file. So if you've built anything for the Python package index, you've probably heard of or seen or even used a pyproject.toml file. This file generally includes all your configurations for your tools. So we have our build system here. We also have, you know, config for the black formatter, the isorts, import sorter, mypy, type checker, etc, etc. And before Python 3.11, there wasn't actually a native way to load a toml file into Python. You had to, you know, download something like toml or tomly. I think there's quite a few of them out there. But now you can load them in uh, using the built-in module. One important thing to note is that you can't write them. Uh, that was not implemented because apparently, I mean, I don't know really anything about it, so I couldn't comment on it personally. But in the stream that the Python Discord did, they mentioned that writing Tomal files is actually really difficult. Uh, and there's a feature called, I think, ring roading or something that people would want if they implemented that. And apparently that's even worse. I suppose they wanted to spend their time on other things. So, you know, maybe they just didn't see the need to be able to write Tomal files when really you're just using it. Um, to load a config because you're just going to be typing it in the actual main editor itself but actually loading them is very simple it's very similar to the json library actually so we can do import toml lib like so and then we can do our with open pi project dot toml and uh, while it is similar to the json lib there is one caveat and it's here we need to specify the mode as read bytes if you don't specify it as a byte, it will error, telling you that you need to open it in a binary mode, which is interesting. I don't necessarily know why that is. Again, I'm not used to passing toml files, so if anyone does know, do let me know, because I'd be interested to see why that is the case. But we can just open that as f, and then we could do, say, config equals tomlib.load f. And then once we print config, uh, we can see our config file here. So what it does is if we look at tool.black, for example, we have our tool here as a separate thing, and then it has a dictionary which contains all of the uh, the subcategories. I'm not really sure what you call it in Tomal. Um, but you have your one for black, and you have your one for isort, and you have your one for mypy, etc., etc. So that's actually really nice. Um, I quite like that. I guess that's how you would do it, but... I've never really used one of these before, as I say. So if you wanted to, say, get the line length for black, you would print uh, config, uh, and then you print toml. Actually, if I move this to the side, it might be easier to see what I'm doing. Uh, so we have our, uh, not toml, tool. So we go into tool, and then within tool, we go into black. So we've now moved from like this section to just here, and then we want the line length specifically. Uh, so we pass line length like that and then once we load it up we can see that we get a line length of 88 so that is how you can you know load toml files and how you can you know access specific attributes within them i will quickly show off how to use the loads function because it is actually a little bit different uh, so if we just comment this out for now if we do with open actually if we just copy paste this for the time being uh, with, that's not what I wanted to do. I'm hitting all the wrong buttons here. There we go. Uh, config equals tomlib.loads f.read. Now the weird thing about this is that you don't actually have to open it as a binary file when you use load. So if you get rid of this, it now loads fine. 
I don't know why you have to load it as a binary file here, and I'll prove that you have to load it as a binary file here, but you don't have to load it as a binary file when you're using loads. Like to me, that seems a bit weird. See, so there we go. That's the error you get if you don't load it as a binary file. So for some reason, if you use the load, it needs to be loaded with the read bytes mode. If you use loads, it needs to be loaded as a string. If you load it as a bytes, you'll actually get an error as well. I don't quite know why that is. It's really weird, but that's a thing. So that might, you know, influence how you use it. Um, it might not, it probably won't, to be completely honest with you. So that's everything that I wanted to talk about in this video. If you liked it, make sure to like, leave a like to let me know. And maybe subscribe if you want to see any more videos like this. If you have any ideas about what you want me to cover in a video, do leave them in the comments. I read every single one, so the feedback would be much appreciated. If you want to support the channel monetarily, you can do so in one of two ways. The first is you can become a member using a join button. The second, uh, you can become a patron using the link in the description. One pound a month on either, and you can be on this screen like these people. A really big thank you to Adam Dreyer for becoming a super patron and I will see you in the next video on Monday where we talk about exception groups in Python 3.11. So I'll see you for that.